Somebody will ask, so the connected impact of Africa's trade gateway digital ecosystem, what is it really about? Well, to lay the foundation for this, we're pleased to have a presentation on the complete picture. To give us a complete picture, an entrepreneur's perspective is a man whose organization has over the years ensured that everything at AfriExim, all our efforts, trickle down to the last mile. I'm talking of Old Wood Green and their chairman and executive CEO. Would you please welcome him as he gives us a very vivid example of how this will trickle down to the everyday entrepreneur. Mr. Gabriel, Edgar is yours. Wow, Jerry, they are so eloquent. Extremely. Always, always, always handling these issues very well. Good afternoon, everyone. I think this level of expectation is very, very high because you didn't even remember to say good afternoon back. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. My work is easy, okay? Um, of course, I recognize all the protocols. We've had enough of that. We thank you for everyone that is here today. You know, I stand here before you today with great enthusiasm and a deep appreciation of the African spirit that beats in each and every one of us. It's the reason why you're here. I bid you to welcome this grand symphony of African commerce, where the rhythm of innovation harmonizes with the melody of opportunity. Today, we gather as the touch bearers of a new era, poised to unlock the untapped potential of our continent and compose a symphony of prosperity that resonates far beyond our borders. We're gathered here, brothers and sisters, united by a shared vision of Africa's economic transformation. And I invite you to embark on the journey of exploration, a journey that would unveil the complete picture of navigating intra-Africa trade. As the curtains rise on these moments in history, we will take a moment to pause, envision the stage before us, a tapestry of colors, vibrant, pulsating with the energy of countless dreams in this room and reverberating with the spirit of the African resolve that we will never be broken. Here, in the theater of Africa trade, we are not going to be mere spectators. We are going to be the actors. We are going to be the creators. We are going to be the visionaries who will write the script for Africa's success story. I'm going to digress a bit because I am not an Afro-Exim Bank staff, in case you thought I was. I'm an entrepreneur like many of you in this room, but I'm one who has bought their vision 123%. And whether they know it or not, I am one of their greatest, the greatest propagators of the programs that they have whether Afrexim Bank or the AFTA, because it comes to a time when we must ask ourselves, what is our role? What is our role? Let us take it from the beginning. Let's trace where we are, how we came here. And in the beginning, the Lord said, go into the world and produce, multiply. We are meant to be productive, not just consumers. We are meant to be producing. And he gave us all of the blessings, a lot more in Africa, such that we have sunshine all year round, which means we can power the world, such that you throw out a seed out. We have arable land, which means we can actually feed the world, all of the minerals we have. And he gave us wonderful and beautiful women. Yes. so we can provide labor for the world. <laughs> so what has happened? He didn't give everyone everything. 
Some he gave gold. Some he gave oil. Some he gave timber. The idea was for us to trade with one another. Exchange what you have for what your neighbor has. And so we have been doing butter. Our ancestors understood this. And they traded with one another for many years. Many, many years exchanging. And they built empires and kingdoms with trade. So trade has always been the answer. I wonder why we left trade and we were creating all sorts of structures in order to unify and integrate Africa without thinking of the most important thing that can unify us, which is trade. Indeed, you will remember Mansa Musa. I think he's been spoken about a lot here. It was in search of trade partners that he made that his famous journey in 1324, that he distorted the world order in metals, and they had to come and look for where that wealth came from. We went there to search for business, and they came, and then the dark days came with them, and then entered slavery. Bitter days, and as if that was not enough, they decided that it is time to share, and then that was the Berlin Convention. And they shared Africa. People who knew no boundaries. Brothers and sisters that could move from one area to the other without passports, without who are you, were suddenly restricted to little fiefdoms that could not stand by themselves. This is what we have done to ourselves. We've put ourselves inside boxes. Do you guys realize that when you travel abroad, do you know what they call us? Africans. Do you ever hear them say Tanzanians, Ghanaians, Nigerians? No. They say you are Africans. Oh, you are from Africa. Of course, because they there know that Africa is one, should be one. But Mali puts it well. Africans unite. Now, from colonization, where resources were plundered, lands divided, borders created, okay? That's what we call ambush in the night. It says, when I want to get some food, my brother has to be my enemy, ambush in the night. That's what it was. So all of a sudden, I go to, 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 to Lesotho, and they say, you know, I have to create a passport. I have to get a passport to move from one country to the other in Africa. Very interesting. But all of those things are going to go. So, but then came neocolonialism. Let me tell you, all of these things that have happened, it's not like Africans sat down and did nothing. We actually fought. Our forefathers fought. Okay, they got independence, but after independence, neocolonialism, they still held, you know, give them the education. So today, we're taught that education is great, it's parts of a butterfly, okay, yeah, for somebody who wants to be a, a, a biologist, but you are not taught about what you have, and we ourselves have not created the education for what we have. Where are the schools teaching about mining? Where are the schools teaching about our resources, about oil? But where are they? So our education, again, hold them by the monetary institutes that we have set up. Create economic control. So yes, they were smart. Take your freedom. But we still have ways to control you. That's why when I see organizations like Afrexim, I now see that there's hope. There's very serious hope. Let's fast forward. You know all this trade liberalization and things that we talk about. So after all the development eras, from the agrarian to, to you know, mechanized, um, to electricity, to digital transformation, now in the fourth revolution, uh, machine and man, you know, Africa had been playing some role, okay? But these guys had moved. Whilst we were suppressed as slaves, suppressed as, as whatever, they had moved. And then you say, trade liberalization. Let's trade freely. How does a lion trade with an antelope? That's the truth. So I think what is important is that we must build ours first. And that's why what Afrexim Bank is doing is completely amazing. 
So I think that Afrexim Bank, we now have the solution. I mean, Afri um, Africa tried. They've done a lot of things. Now, the governments have given us Africa Union. Africa Union has given us Afrexim Bank. They have given us AFTA. The question now is, what happens next? Is you and I. Is you and I. The solution apparently has been with us since, and it's trade. Trade, powered by Afrexim Bank, powered by AFTA, and the digital economy that is being created by these platforms that we said. The African solution can only be found in African unity. Through regional trade, we can become producing rather than consuming nations. Now we can have a seat on the table. And I like what uh, Prime Minister Motley said, Mayor Motley said yesterday. He says, you know, if, you don't, if there's no seat for you on the table, bring your own. How do we bring our seat? The collective unity of the African people. Let us produce, let us create here, and let's face the world as one. That's the point. And I'm saying this, I'm building up to something to say what our role is as the private sector. Afrexim Bank, after, I must thank you all very much, Afrexim Bank. Honestly, from the bottom of my heart, sometimes I wonder if you didn't exist, where's the direction for Africa? <laughs> Special thanks to a great brother and visioner, someone I always admire, Professor Benedict Orama. Honestly, those are the kind of presidents we need in Africa. Absolutely. Extremely visionary. So you just witnessed the soft launch of the ATG. You looked at the unveiling of 30 years of hard work. And you heard, if you heard the president, he can tell you. I mean, they went from a hundred million balance sheet to 32 billion in 30 years. This is about one billion every year in growth. And I heard him say that in the next six years, very likely you will double that balance sheet to 60 billion, which means we have our own IMF now. Did you see the products? Did you see the products that they were showing? Entry point, Mansa. Now, Mansa, of course, the expert is here. Mansa is a single source of due diligence for all Africans, approved by all central banks. So you want to trade with your brother somewhere, let's even start by knowing you, okay? So you upload your information, that information is there and anybody around Africa can see it. They now know that you've gone through some due diligence. So Mansa is your entry point. Then PAPS, then you can now make payments in local currency, okay? Do you know what it means if we can now pay in local currency, guys? <laughs> Look, you know, if you go to Cairo today, every week you go to Cairo, Egypt, they are building. They are builders. Remember the pyramids? We don't now know who really built it, but anyway. Because that thing, if you see those blocks, it's very serious to know that. But they are builders. So you would think build bridges have been... Imagine if we can get those people who are builders to come and build roads, build bridges for us, and we pay them in local currency. Do you know the kind of industrial development we would have? Do you know the transformation? Afrexim Bank. <laughs> and then Trader. I will not speak about Trader, but you've heard about it. It's a platform, because then, how do I know who produces what, who is where? All that is on that platform, Trader. And then ATEX. And then access to finance. Trade finance and trade finance infrastructure. And then export development. And then SME support. And then building industrial enclaves, partnering with Arise. And then supporting the AFTA um, program to Blossom then providing African quality assurance centers, and then funds for export development, FIDA, and then Afrex Insure to protect your, your, your goods and investments, and then project preparation facility to encourage entrepreneurs to go into manufacturing, and then African Medical Center of Excellence. Let's give Afrexin Bank another round of applause. <laughs> and then the AFTA. The AFTA removing barriers to trade, creating single markets, creating no tariff arrangements, transit guarantee schemes, African trading company concepts, which, you know, uh, a friend of mine here, uh, Magdan, is very, very passionate about. All of this has created the platform for us. So what's the complete picture, therefore? 
This is Big Brother. Mr. Edgar, you have five minutes remaining. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I have just two, two pages left. So what is, what is this complete picture we speak about? It's the private sector that is missing in all of this. Okay? This is a charge to the private sector, of which I am one. So like I said, governments have given us AU. AU has given us Afrexim Bank. And after, after has provided us with platform, Afrexim Bank has provided us with capital. Okay? Now it is our turn, the private sector. It is you and I, entrepreneurs, the risk takers, the job creators, the bridge builders who have the key to unlocking this potential. Okay? Um, and everything must be deliberate. It's not by mistake. Do you see how uh, Prime Minister Motley spoke about you know, the Caribbean connection and the creation of Global Africa, which started with just creating vaccines, and then they now decided deliberately to create that. And today, we have partnership with, with the Caribbeans. We must start thinking Global Africa immediately. Expanded markets, which will be given to you by Trader and that thing. Diverse partnerships. Private sector. Don't think local. Think Africa. That's all I, I came here to advise you on. Access to financial markets, what are you doing to provide that? We are trying to be a conduit for capital into the continent. What are you doing? Leverage technology. There are technology houses here. Don't restrict it to Ghana. Don't restrict it to Zimbabwe. Do it Africa-wide. Logistics. I know my friend is doing a lot in that. Knowledge, training. That's essential training that is required. Entrepreneurs here, let's pick it up. This is what I'm saying. So for us, we have done our part. We are doing our part. You know, at Oakwood Green Africa, this is one of the partnerships we have. Okay, we've decided to be a conduit for capital into Africa. We've decided to be a conduit for uncommon knowledge, which is not the one that they will teach you in classrooms, but the ones that you need to survive in Africa. We've decided to leverage technology to solve Africa's problems. We've decided to partner, and doing this, we partner with Afrexim. We're partnered with PAPS to ensure people know about it. We actually go business to business telling you how to do that and pay in local currency. We've partnered with Mansa. We've partnered with IATF. And by the way, uh, Intra-Africa Trade Fair is coming up in November this year. All I'm saying, guys, is that for us, it will not be sitting on the fence. It will be embracing these digital platforms. It will be getting onto the Mansa platform now, enlisting. It will be getting onto the trader platform now, enlisting. It will be getting onto PAPS, start talking about your suppliers. You know, first of all, look around you in Africa. Why, if we have cement next door, why are we importing offshore? Why don't we import next door? Think about that. Import substitution. If I were you, I would go and look at the list of everything that we're importing, and you will start producing it here so that people can start buying. Because right now, absolutely. Because right now, everything has been created for us. The platforms are there, the finance is there, the digital platforms are there, and you will hear from the speakers um, later how you can, you can benefit. But it's no longer sitting on the fence. No one is going to do this for us except ourselves. My name is Gabriel Edgar, Chairman of Okud Green Africa. My team and I plan to be a part of the solution. What about you? What a picture, the complete picture, ladies and gentlemen, of boldness, ambition, relentlessness, and a call to be unbound. Private sector, think global, not local.